Well, um, <laughs> I guess I'm the one that contributed this whole thing. So um, my name is Priscilla. I um, brought with me my two friends today. I um, first about myself, I was almost baptized in the LDS church. Sean, he is a former member of the LDS church. He was born and raised into it. And then we have um, Gabe. He is uh, my Bible study leader. And um, we do want to make a statement um, as far as the declaration goes. We're not here to debate. We're just here to have in um, a healthy, mature, respectful um, conversation and exchange of beliefs. Um, if you guys wanna introduce yourselves. I'm Travis. Sure. Nice to meet you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm Gabriel. I'm Sean. So what, what did we wanna discuss? Um, so we were asked, the, so I went ahead and talked with um, the missionaries back on Thursday of last week, and we discussed some issues and we realized we kind of were jumping all over the place. So we went ahead and came up to the ultimate question of what is the dividing barrier between the two faiths. Um, so that way we can just go from there and um, that, that way we just stay on track better. Um, for me personally, I would have to say the fact that I believe it is a works versus faith-based um, religion as far as the LDS church goes. Um, and and what, does, I know, what does that mean? Well, I'm not finished. Um, well, there's three points for as far as the dividing beliefs go for me. Sean and Gabe. So for me, it would be works versus um, faith. For Sean, it's who Jesus is um, and what he taught, but more so who he is in his nature and character um, and those such things. And then for Gabe, he can't really pinpoint anything in particular. He just believes it's a mixture of a good mixture of a few things. It's not just one thing. Um, that does it for him. And then as far as you guys go, what do you think is the dividing barrier between the two? I, the, the core, the core doctrine, doctrinal differences. I, I don't, I don't know what your faith is, so I have no idea what your religious background oh, okay. is. So, so I, I forgot. I, I, I mean, um, if sorry. you're just talking about, are, are you Protestants? Are you? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I meant to mention that. Um, so we are, all three of us are Christian non-denominational. I did for, forget to mention that. Um, and okay. as mentioned before, I was almost baptized to the LDS church. Sean was a former uh, member of the LDS church for over roughly 30 years. And um Gabe is just is, is my Bible study leader. He has a lot of history and ministry and youth groups and things like that. Um, he doesn't know too much about the LDS church, but he has heard me and Sean talk about it quite a bit. And he's more so he's very he's more knowledgeable in the, in the Bible and what the Bible says. OK, so, I mean, there's a lot of diversity amongst evangelicals and Protestants, so I'm not sure specifically what what you guys accept as beliefs but generally speaking um latter-day saints um reject some of the core doctrines of what we view as apostate christianity um and namely those are the nature of god um you guys believe in the ontological trinity and uh, we reject that and then the, as an ultimate source of authority, typically evangelicals accept the um, doctrine of sola scriptura, which we also reject. I would also oh, yeah. add that um, that another key difference would be what our purpose here in this life is. 
Okay, and then also end goal, I'd like to add to that um, what the end goal result after this life is. Um, I think that where we end up and what happens afterwards is a big difference. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there. Um, Christians, as far as I know, non-denominational, all three of us, we believe that um, our sole purpose here is to give God glory, glorify him in everything that we do. Um, that's actually a Bible verse in, in all you do and say, give glory to God. Um, and then in the afterlife, we believe um, in that salvation and eternal life. They're not necessarily separate. I know in the LDS church, they are separate. Um, salvation is offered to everybody, whereas eternal life is a completely separate um, route on how you obtain that. And then the purpose. I'm, I'm, for so, I'm sorry. I are you are you telling me what our beliefs are, or or did you want us to explain them to you? Well, you can, but you asked me a question, so I'm saying like what as far as right, the but, but I would want to know what your beliefs are. As, I, I, as far as differences, I mean, I, I can. I can identify what my own belief system okay. conveys, okay, and, well, and so a lot of several. And the reason I the reason I'm saying it is a couple of the things that you said are, are incorrect. So okay, well, I'm sorry if you uh, feel misrepresented. I'll go ahead and just speak well, I, on. I, I, yeah, it's not a matter of feeling misrepresented. It's just that a few of the things that you said are actually incorrect. Okay, I'll let you explain that. But um, for Christians, once again, our purpose here is just to give and glory for, to for, God. And for which Christians? For all Christians. Um, for a majority, you know, not just non-denominational, I would say um, we could come hand in hand with Catholics, Baptists. Um, okay, so Catholics are Christians? Like that as far as, I'm sorry, what? You believe Catholics are Christians? I think we're going to go down a, a long that's, road. That's kind of a separate <laughs> thing. Um, Third one the drain here already. Everything that we've, that's already been mentioned could turn into an entire theological degree. So we should probably stick to one topic. Let's stick to like what? one and then no no I, I, i'm explaining what um you're asking so I'm, I'm just saying as far as what our purpose here on earth and then what happens in the afterlife us right three, so just yeah Christian so just explain yeah so just explain your okay. belief and don't so as christian non denominationals we believe that our sole purpose is to give god and glory in absolutely any way possible while we're here on earth and then our sole purpose once we um are no longer present with the body that we are to just worship God in heaven. We are with our creator. And that's pretty much the summary of that. We just give glory to God forever after after that. And, and do you, you guys, believe... Sean and Gabe, do you want to add anything to that? Is there anything different or anything I might have not said entirely correctly? Or Again, I think that that's a topic that if if we want to talk about the after you know eternal life then we can sit around and talk about eternal life if we want to talk about the differences between what the lds believe and what biblical christianity believes we would have to start from the beginning of something right and i think you've kind of touched on it on a few points of it um i'm sorry looking at travis uh solo scriptura i think that gets an abused word uh from other outside perspectives, right? It's not through scripture alone, right? We have these other things, solo fide, if you wanna, I'm not, I am not a Calvinist, I'm not a reformed uh, Christian in that aspect, but yes, we believe as biblical Christians that the person of Jesus Christ is different than the Latter-day Saints person of Jesus Christ. Um, and I and then think if you want to go ahead and elaborate very, that a little bit more, um, I think from the very Travis, beginning, if, if, hold on a second. And I think from the very beginning that that is the divining line. If we have two different Jesuses, we have two completely different belief systems that we fall off of, which that is the dividing line. If we can have two different Jesuses, then we have two completely different religions, right? One that says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me, and the other one that doesn't believe that. Okay, what is the what is yours belief? I'm the, the way, the, the truth, truth, and life, life. and okay, no one comes to the Father but through me. That's what that's what we believe. So I, I 
are you saying that I don't believe that? But I, I was well, going to mention if there's, Travis, there's, if you want to explain, in, but. if you want to explain, Travis, um, going back to your original question, what you guys do believe as far as um, what purpose is here on Earth, and then you know the afterlife and the Jesus that you believe that this is your opportunity right here to go ahead and um, on those three topics, what our purpose here on Earth is what our purpose is in the afterlife or what happens in the afterlife and then who jesus is to you we you can go ahead right now um and explain that a well, little our, bit better our purpose in mortality is to receive a physical body and to walk by faith so that's our purpose here in this life and if we accomplish that then we return to live with our heavenly father so I'm not sure how that's a lot different than what you explained. You use different terminology, I'm sure. And I'm not sure how to unpack the different terms you used. But as far as uh, the the other question is, is what is my Jesus? Oh, who is Jesus to you? Because for Christians, well, as you mentioned, we believe in the Trinity. You know, we have certain um, right, yeah, so, general so we, bulletin we don't points. Accept, yeah, we don't accept the ontological Trinity because there's no such concept taught anywhere in scripture. Um, N neither, neither is there pre-mortal existence. There is taught in scripture, yes. The, well, in your canon, yes. Right, because again, that's why the, the, the central doctrines that divide us are the nature of God and authority with respect to whether or not the canon is closed. So yes. for sure, and that's a big thing too, whether or not the Bible is the final authority or if there right. is. Right, and see, and, and so for Latter-day Saints, the final authority would not be a, a collection of manuscripts, it would be God. And I know for evangelicals, basically they practice what, what we often will refer to as bibliolatry, which is the worship of the Bible, because they believe it is the word of God, and exclusively so, even though the the doctrine is contrived from materials extant from the bible that aren't found in it so i'm not sure i mean i think i, I, also, I appreciate i appreciate your 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 doctrine i understand it but i mean mm -hmm. considering the fact that sola scriptura can't be contained in the bible itself um the doctrine would be nonsensical if it was but so how do you my question to you is how do you know when to stop the open canon we, if we, you know we, the bible wasn't enough how do you know the book of mormon you know isn't isn't enough and that you're not going to need other scripture like at some point something has to be the authority the standard for grounds of you know um belief and has to come to a stop so how do you why, why would it have to do that because then anybody could just come forward and say, I have new revelation, you know? Right. And, and anybody can come, anybody can come forward and say, I have a different interpretation of these 66 texts. But if you look at the interpretations of um, what we have, all of the different interpretations, um, the meaning is still the same. And so I think that's, that's no, where the, the meaning is not the same. And that's why there's, there's such diversity within Christianity with, with respect to their denominations. So the interpretations, I think that what you meant is translations yeah. of the Bible, and the translations are certainly not the same. Translations are, are different, and, and the, okay. the different translations of the texts will vary. And So course, you agree the translation is the same, or? No, the tr there's, there's different translations of the Bible. There's the NRSV, the NIV, the ESV, the KJV, the New King James mm -hmm. Version. I mean, there's, there's thousands of, of translations of the biblical texts. The Book of Mormon, when it's translated in different languages, such as um, in Germany, and you know, how can you right. trust those? Because, because when you translate a document between languages, there's variations. There has to be. And exact, and that's what happened with the Bible. They didn't go from English to German to French to Arabian. They went straight from Hebrew and straight mm -hmm. to English. What? And that's what I, I'm has sorry, happened. I'm not I'm not following what you're saying. So the, the Bible is is written in predominantly in two languages. There's portions of it that were written in Aramaic, but it's predominantly ancient Hebrew, Aramaic, 
Greek. Hebrew, it's, Greek, Latin. It's not written in, it, it's written Correct. in Koine oh, sorry. Greek. The, yeah. So sorry. It's, it's written in Koine Greek. There, there are some manuscripts that are believed to have been written in Coptic, but the reality of it is, is that the ancient languages predominantly were Hebrew and Greek. Yes. And okay. so from the Hebrew and the Greek, we translate them into many different languages. And sometimes we translate them into English and then translate the English version into German. But that's typically not what happens. Luther has his Bible that was translated into German. And so uh, translations from language to language have what bearing do you believe on the text? And Sean or Gabe, do you have anything? Do you want to say anything on that? I'm not sure what your point was with that because... Yeah. I because I, I mean effectively unless you unless you read ancient hebrew and yeah. greek you're you're reading a translation i agree but that's going back to my point of how the bible is not miss and there's not all these interpretations and no, there are interpretations that's why we're sitting here disagreeing with one another yeah right and it, and and irrespective of the number of denominations the fact is is that there's there's not there's not harmony amongst Christians with respect to their different interpretations of different doctrines. There's, I, and I would but argue there's not harmony amongst amongst the the Mormon Church itself as well, right? Like, so I was born into the Mormon Church. I spent almost thirty years in it. Um, you know, my sister is about to get married in the Salt Lake City Temple. Um, my mom, dad, brothers, family of nine drove a BMW, a big Mormon wagon. Um, so I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what that is, but okay. You don't know what a BMW is? No. Oh man, well, I know what a BMW. Make, it's, it's it stands used for to make B the joke. Bavarian Motor Works. It's a. It's a <laughs> All right, so let's let's lighten up a little bit. We used to joke around in the parking lot when you'd pull into the the church. You'd have Suburbans and fifteen passenger vans and twelve passenger jan vans, and we used to joke when we'd come in the parking lot. Look at all these BMWs, these big Mormon wagons. Okay. That, that was the joke. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fell flat there. All right. Awesome. <laughs> so he's just trying to light it. Light it I, up I just don't, I don't so understand the so... punchline because Mormons drive large vehicles. <laughs> is that the joke? Oh my God, man. This is, yeah, <laughs> it's all right. All right. So let's, I'm just not, I'm just not understanding what the, I mean, what, what was the point of that anecdotal story? He just wanted to throw a joke so out. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So um, Mormons, Mormons that, drove big vehicles and that has, I what still do, man. I still, I, I've got four kids family of six, like still got a big way, a big Mormon wagon. So <laughs> except, the, except you're not a member of the church anymore. I imagine. Absolutely. Okay. Praise God. So we need to, if, if this conversation is going to be fruitful, we should pick a topic instead of jumping from, okay. and, and I'm not, I'm not chastising anybody. I just think what, what's, what's the intent of this conversation, right? Do we want to talk about what our differences in eternal life are? Do we want to talk about what are differences of authority? Do we want to talk about what well, the our, difference I, I, is? Yeah, so we've already identified okay. that the differences in eternal life, as Priscilla identified them, are not that different. Um, however, with respect to the source of authority, we're, we we diverge greatly because you guys, yeah. for whatever reason, believe only the Bible is Scripture. Because that's what we find in scripture, right? That's what we find in scripture that God, we have two types of revelation, right? We have general revelation and we have special revelation. And general revelation is what we experience through. Everybody experiences general revelation. When you see a tree growing, how does the tree grow in the world and the creation and my eyeball? All of these things are general revelation. When I can see things in the world, that are created, it is a sign of God, right? In Romans, as it tells us, all people know of God. Well, people who believe in deny. God, people who right. believe in God would recognize those as, as arguments, but people who don't would not. Because of their hardened hearts, right? So or or because they simply don't have an understanding of the nature of God, or they don't understand different theological positions respecting the nature of God. And I would argue that Romans 1 tells us why. That's where the authority yeah. comes from. And God. I would argue that Romans 1 is a text found in the New Testament, and you can interpret it a variety of different ways. I Absolutely. feel like that's not necessarily true, though, because if somebody well, were to co come up to somebody and, and start punching them, and then someone's like, hey, dude, what are you doing? And it's like, well, the Bible says, punch my neighbor. And then, you know, it's like, no, it doesn't. Like, anybody could, there's not, 
you know, you can twist it how you want, but there's very, like, it's very slim on, uh, as far as interpretation goes with scripture. Um, if it's pretty clear when God says, love your neighbor, Priscilla, Priscilla, that's your neighbor. A, I know, but that's objectively not true because of the different denominations and religions all predicated on the Bible. Most of those different denominations believe in the same Jesus as far as like all the little things like we would come hand in hand with a with Baptist and um, a few other denominations, you know, as far as salvaic issues go, we would all agree on who Jesus is. And and for that reason, there's not really as far like denominations like. I would agree that there's a there is a large umbrella cast and that umbrella says Christianity on it and there is a huge portion of churches or religions or whatever you want to call them Christian claimed people that will put themselves under this umbrella of Christianity that all of them aren't and again I would say that's from Matthew 7 the narrow gate right many are going to choose to take the wide path of destruction few will find the narrow gate many people are going to say lord lord I prophesied in your name, and he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of evil, right? Um, and, and I know I say these things because that's what we find in, in the text of the Bible. Um, now, as far as, as, as our authority, I understand that there's m- a multitude of authorities in which the LDS faith is based off of, right? Um, and generally, it's no, based off our, our authority is God. Yeah, the Holy Spirit, right? The burning in your bosom is what's no, going our, to hurt feelings or affirm what is true, right? If 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 I'm correct, right? Elders The amount of times that I've been told to read, pray read. about the Book of Mormon. The amount of times I've been told to pray about the Book of Mormon and see if it's true. That is not how we test the spirit. And that is what the Bible tells us. And so you have, that's why you have to have something. As right, your- right. Yeah, I know. And, and, and most Christians don't believe in prayer. That's true. So I, I found that as well. Well, and, and again, I think we, we can say Christians all we want. Um, I know, I know lots of people, as y'all know, lots of people that say that they are Christians, that they are absolutely not. Right. right? I don't, we, I don't, we can right. agree. I, I, I can call I'll myself. Tell you, I'll tell you this right now. I don't long, consider myself. I will never be a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Right. Right. I, I don't consider myself a Christian. That is awesome because I've never heard that before. I've, I have met a few sisters that right. have said, I mean, right. that's because, true. well, it's because, all, and, and I'll tell you why. So people the reason, say different things. Right. Each so member says, is, the reason is, is that most people, um, out of a sense of charity, they'll use the definition of Christian that's provided in the dictionary, which is an inclusive de- definition. As Latter-day Saints, we seek to be inclusive. We try to be um, accommodating to people based on where they're at. So we t- if somebody understands something at a certain level, we'll take them at that level, and then we try to build on them. What we don't do is we don't speak in exclusive language. So we don't say, well, you're not a Christian because you don't believe in X, Y, and Z, and it's required for you to believe in X, Y, and Z for you to be a Christian. Generally, believing in Jesus of Nazareth and his teachings is not sufficient. And so most Christians, what they do is they speak in these very exclusive terms so that they can distance themselves from people who don't hold to their specific dogma. Latter-day Saints don't view it that way. We're more what did, what did what did Jesus say about his believers? How do how do you how do you become a Christian? That's a good question. How do you become a Christian? That's that's what I'm asking. I, I'm asking you. I'm not sure. I'm not just, one, so I don't know. Okay. Well, the, I would refer back to my my authority of the Bible, where it tells me what to do. Right now, it's more than just a profession of my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And okay. was raised from the dead. It's more than that, right? Because I, 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 is it? It is. That, it that's predominantly. That's predominantly how how it's been explained to me. Is that with yeah, the mouth but, confession but, is made, and then yeah, right? it's it's it, again in Romans. Um, was it five nine? Romans five nine. If you profess with your mouth, uh, no, Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Yep. You shall be saved. And then even his disciples ask him um right so what so what what, so mike my question is is what additional baggage are you adding to that in order to make you christians and those who don't believe like you not christians i think 
Again, it's, I could I couldn't I could not judge somebody. How do we know if somebody is a Christian, right? Well, Jesus tells us that we'll know somebody by their fruits. Right. I would that there's I would I would argue that there's absolutely wolves in sheep's clothing, right? There's people out there that are producing on the outside good fruits, but they don't have a heart for Jesus, right? Okay. That would be a fair assessment to say that there are many people hiding in the shadows. And I know that because the Bible tells me that we will have all of these people that give us these false prophets that will come forward, that will give us mm -hmm. um, preach another Jesus, right? Is what they will do. And so with that confession of your mouth and that belief, it's a change of your heart. Right. Okay. And the change of your heart is done by the Holy Spirit. And you guys would absolutely agree with me on that. Right. That that the absolute change of your heart is 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 done by the Holy Spirit. Right. Um, the process of sanctification. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ultimately, we're, we're going from our faith in Christ, which justifies us in the eyes of God. Right. Mm -hmm. And through this process of justification, we are seen Christ's righteousness is imputed upon us. Right. So we're no longer yeah. seen as the sinners. We're seen as. Yeah. As, so we, we would we would differ in those theological terms and what they mean. Yeah. Like, at eight okay. years old, I was baptized and all my sins were washed away. And then I was accountable for everything else after that as well. So no, no, at eight years old, you entered into a covenant to have your sins washed away, but okay. Yeah. How is that different than what I said? It's different theologically, but okay. he can't acknowledge he's being forced though, to give, well, to go. Well, I, can't, I can't speak to what no, I, I will, may or I may not have forced him to do. Eight years old. I wasn't right. forced. And I'm so willing, like, I was excited, looked forward to it. It was a thing that I, I wanted to do. Um, I, and I have no, I don't want any- Right, right, so, so you, you, guys are, you guys are kind of doing a lot of rambling. So what, what specifically, like I said, after confession is made, what specific beliefs does a person have to ascribe to in order to be considered a Christian? So again, I, our, our understanding as Latter-day Saints that's why the, the missionaries predominantly and most members will say they're Christians because they're using a general term from the, from the dictionary that anybody who follows the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth and believes that he is the son of God is a Christian. And it doesn't matter what other baggage they apply to that because Latter-day Saints aren't, aren't in a position, you know, as you indicated, to judge people as to what's in their heart. So if somebody yeah. says, I believe in Jesus and I'm, I'm a Christian, and we would just accept that. We're not going to say, no, you're not, but you guys do. So if you're going to do that, mm -hmm. what additional beliefs are you? No, I think required? it goes back to who Jesus is, what Jesus. Not what I'm, I'm not going to say you're not a Christian. If you tell me you believe in Christ, if it is the right Christ, right? Because there is definitely people out there. Right. That, so, so am I a Christian then? No, no. Okay. No. Right. Okay. So now that's what I'm saying. Again, you're, you're, it's a it's a circular thing. So let's because, let's not because do that. your Christ was what created. Specifically, what do I believe? Because you believe that you will be saved by works and not just by faith okay. alone. I don't believe that. So third article now, of faith. What is your third article of faith? What is the third article of faith? Well, let me look it up. We believe quick. that through the atonement of Christ, all men may kind may be saved by obedience to the laws and ordinances. Of the yes, gospel. by obedience uh -huh. to the laws and ordinances. Right, and so you believe that so a that's person, not just by faith. So you believe you believe that a person can confess with the, their mouth the Lord Jesus and not perform fruits, and they are still not. saved. Okay. Of course not. Right, but that's so where the difference is between doing. That's why the. That's why. That's why faith in the lord jesus christ is the first principle of the gospel mm -hmm. and in because james too. out of faith comes good works so Correct, this but go on so i i don't agree. believe what we will you said. we will agree not, on that right through my faith in christ in the sanctification of the holy spirit i will produce good works right because right. i will want to be more like christ right. that is a thing that we would absolutely agree on uh -huh. but i have to go all the way back to the beginning of that if I believe in the wrong person of Christ, I believe in a Christ that can't save me. I believe in a Christ that is not described in the Bible. Well, don't then, do that. Then I put all of and these also second good, Nephi. good fruits okay, so let that are finish. false fruits because it's not done through the Holy Spirit. So no Holy explain Spirit. to me, explain to me what exactly is it that you think I believe about Jesus specifically? That he was pick, a, pick one that thing. Let's go through. That, that he is a created being we don't believe jesus is a created being 
He is, you don't, you're telling me that the- I'm telling you that if you have a heavenly mother, heavenly father, getting hey, 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 together. For 30 years I can't, I can't talk to you both not, at the same time. No, what I'm saying is, is, I believe that in 30 years, you never read Doctrine and Covenants section 93. I think that you ever read section 110. I don't think you read section 131. I don't think you read the book of Abraham or the book of Moses. Because if well, you did, you Abraham, would know that- The book of Abraham is a whole different ballgame. That's a whole different ballgame. It, do, it doesn't matter what your opinion is on the text. It's just whether or not he read it while he was a member. Uh, it's one of those. Being, I, right. So I, the, point being, I, the point being is Latter-day Saints specifically reject creatio ex nihilo. So if we reject creatio ex nihilo, we can't believe in a created Jesus. We but believe, do you believe that? Okay. Okay, we, but we there's also still the fact Jesus. that Jesus and Lucifer are brothers, and if you don't believe that he was created, then how can he be equal to Lucifer? What? If Jesus is God, because he's not a created being, I don't believe Jesus him... is created is equal to Lucifer. But they're brothers; they're spirit brothers, aren't they? No. Do you remember Lucifer, what we talked Luc about on Thursday, Lucifer? Priscilla? Lucifer was cast out. But they were spirit brothers. The they're, first they're one not, that was because, Jesus, yeah, right, and I, Lucifer was the I, second born. Correct. The the concept of a spirit brotherhood between Lucifer and Jesus is not a doctrine of the church. G Lucifer has been oust, ousted from the kingdom of God. He's been cut off, so he is not a spirit brother of Jesus. No. Well, that's and, must be new. And the I mean, alternative, the alternative is that that if you want to, if you want to kind of look at it from that perspective, where did Lucifer come from? He was created. Right by by who? By Jesus. Nothing. Okay. Through, so all so things were created. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how how that is more or less of a theological issue that they are eternally existing beings and one of them rebelled or your so Jesus... lucifer was eternally existing yes all of Latter us were eternally existing. yeah latter-day saints don't believe in creatio ex nihilo see so, yeah, yeah because you believe in the pre-mortal existence no it's because we don't believe in creatio ex nihilo we don't believe that anything is created yeah, matter has existed for all time and eternity. And and so have the intelligence. So I would say that the LDS God, because, because you don't achieve in that. Yeah, so you're defining a God within a creation that he created. No. So he has to be within it. No. Yeah, he, he has to be, he can't create matter. He has no. to be within the creation that he is. So that makes your God small. Oh, okay. That's, so yeah. my, my dad can beat up your dad. That's your argument. No, no, that's not my. You're argument. saying that matter. No, I'm saying all things existed, and God organizes matter, which is actually what the Bible reflects. The Bible doesn't it's, support creatio ex nihilo. The concept no, it, isn't found anywhere no, in the biblical text. It, it's in Genesis one. It's in the very yeah, beginning. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't even go near Genesis chapter one verse one. I wouldn't expect you to. I mean, that's the whole. I, conversation. I, I wouldn't expect you to because I don't think you've read what I've read on it. Okay. What did you read? What did you get from that? What, what interpretation so the, 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 did you get from it's that? It's not an interpretation. The fact is, is that Genesis 1, 1 is probably the most complex verse in the biblical text. Could I you agree. explain it it's for us? Broadly, it's broadly misunderstood. The interpretation of it has nothing to do with creatio ex nihilo. And what but, it means is you, it means but, that it means. But you would say that you have it right, correct? No, I, it's not a matter of right. It's a matter of what the Hebrew states. It has nothing okay. to do with theological positions because I don't really care too much about theological positions. I care yeah, about the next state. And so the reality of it is, is that the, the biblical texts state what they state. And so the words are what they are. And for example, the idea, the concept of creatio ex nihilo would be foreign to an ancient people who would have been authoring those texts. So what, what? Genesis 1.1 says is it says in the horizon time, in the beginning time, God separated the land and the sky. So what you would say is you would argue that a disciple... That's not what I would say. That's actually what the, the verse and, conveys. It, that's your... Regardless. That's your, it's not right? mine. That's, it's not mine. Okay. Well, wherever you read it from, that's their belief of it. It's not so their belief. You, you have, you have no... You can't, you can't base any authority on anything other than a, 
somebody else is reading or you're feeling because you have no ultimate authority. It's not of feeling. Saying. It's not feeling. Yeah, it it's a matter of what the text actually feel. states. And 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 so since the beginning of the church history, from the first, second, and third centuries, when we have um they didn't believe in caratio ex nihilo either th th that was a huge separation in the church yeah eventually middle ages so the apostle john completely misunderstands jesus through divine leading of the holy spirit as it Who, says in, the in, apostle john what are you talking about with the apostle john in the gospel of john in the beginning you, was the word right so you're assuming that john wrote john absolutely okay because that's what most critical right and that's called and, an argumentum um, populum which is just because a lot of people think something that you should as well which is exactly what you just did for genesis one i i didn't no i'm actually no you did no no you what did. i said is that there's that is not the, that's not the held standard there's divergent that. disagreement with respect to genesis 1 1 you're indicating that Genesis 1 1 teaches creatio ex nihilo. The Hebrew can't support that text, that, that understanding. It states that in the beginning or at the at and it's only speaking again about this globe. So the book, the Bible is not talking about all of things. It's talking about this earth. So what, is what about the Joseph what Smith's translation where he translated when they use it? The word cosmos in the beginning was the word. I, I don't I don't know why that would have anything to do with that with that, but I'm because we're, we're, we're not talking Smith about it. We're not talking translated about it. that. I know, Priscilla, you've got it. You've got to not go down rabbit holes that are completely irrelevant and not germane to what we're talking about. But they're not so irrelevant because they, they are because we're not that talking about because it's we're not talking about John, a false prophet. We're not talking about John 1 1. We're talking about Genesis 1 1, right? We, but I would, say, I would say that, yeah, Genesis 1 1. And, and right. My, so this, Genesis this 1 1. Argument, one yeah, Genesis that, 1 1, the Greek, the, the Hebrew, the Hebrew yes. rather. Of Genesis one one doesn't support creatio ex nihilo. It speaks but about the things being formed and organized. And their gospels do understand that the cosmos no, the, the, was the not Greek, just the earth; it was all of creation. Right, the, universe. the the Greek and, texts also the don't. Greek does say no. The Greek also doesn't support the idea of creation from nothing. It talks about yes, it forming and you can eternity say from, from, it, from all eternity, like Greek everlasting, everlasting. Does. I can I can have the same argument back to you. The Greek absolutely does. Right, support you can you can just say things, right? You That's can say true. the same thing that this that right. does not support that, but it does not make okay, it true. Okay, show me show me a passage in the Greek text that states creatio ex nihilo and teaches the doctrine. The the, the way that the Greek syntax is written for the word cosmos is in re, is in regards to not just the earth, all of everything, everything. Okay, and, and what does that have to do with creatio ex nihilo? It's the exact portion when he talks about, um, all right, hold on. Because I was talking about the Hebrew texts are going to be referring to the world. Yes, right? and so what I'm doing is tying Genesis 1 and John 1 together because okay, that's what, I, I, don't know, that's where, I don't know why you're doing that, but. Because that's where because they go. there's a relation that's between exactly the two. where John is coming from. Right, it's from presumed that John one one is is a midrash of of Genesis. Yes, it's it's an interpretation of Genesis. That's but the I don't know what that has to do with anything. Starting in the beginning, that's where John is. The yeah, in the beginning, in the beginning of what? Of everything. In the beginning. Like, right, you're you're presuming the beginning of everything. Mm -hmm. The beginning of not, what else could you? What else can you? All oh, the beginning of the earth, the beginning of time as we you, know it, you, the beginning like of human creation, that, the the beginning of, and and then John chapter one verse three says that all things were formed, and without God, nothing was formed that was formed. So it's just talking about things that were organized or formed. <laughs> no, that's what you interpret it to me. No, that's actually what the Greek says. That all things, it, it, all things came into being. It, it says things that were, I know that you're reading an English translation. I don't know which one you're reading. I'll pull up the Greek for you real quick. Okay. So um, my thing is I'm, I'm kind of sitting back and, you know, being a little bit of a spectator. My, um, uh, I kind of had a feeling that this was where it's going to go. I didn't want it to really be yeah. turning into kind of an argument. Uh, it's turning into an uh, argument because you're, you're not, you're not doing what we originally stated. So you said that 
we're going to talk about the differences in our beliefs, but what you're doing is you're telling me what I believe, and then you're trying to attack it, and and that's that's yeah, not that's here, not a conversation. So what you have to do is you have to explain what you believe and why. I identified the distinction between our beliefs, which is sola scriptura, and that's the primary concern that we're both going to have. You're going to po point back to the Bible and prop it up as the final authority. I don't believe the Bible's an authority in that way. So if you yep. want to have the Bible be the final authority, I guess the first thing you'd want to do is prove that the Bible alone is the authority. Okay. And uh, my, my thing, like, and then I, I don't I know how you're going to do that. Oh, I understand. Uh, so I, I'll give you just like how I believe. I didn't know uh, church uh, in terms. I would be somebody who looked completely from the outside. Uh, wasn't really born into anything. Um, I, is, this, is this relevant to proving that the Bible alone is I, I'm, I'm just curious because I was really kind of hoping like what I believe is true, right? This is what I know. I, I, so I, like I understand that. I appreciate your feelings on the subject. But I'm trying to understand yeah. what, why you believe that the Bible alone is scripture. I, I don't really base things off of feelings myself. A lot of LDS members do. Lots of people do in general. No. Like, for example, for sure. let me ask Christians you this. Christians go straight to the Bible. So when why do you believe, minute, why do you believe the Bible please, is please, scripture? Please. Oh, for just a moment. Hold why do you believe the Book of Mormon Here, is scripture? Priscilla, Priscilla, stop for a minute. Okay. So let, let's just say in, in terms of uh me being i guess like a defendant or whatever uh and i'm having i'm having something being held against me i want to know what's true in order for me to be free does that make sense um i would really no you just give me that whole Tra travis dude I i'm you're a defendant listen, hold on i'm defendant. not done travis. i'm not done I want to know, right? This concerns me because this is what I believe to be true. And right. if this doesn't save me, I'd like to know what does. Right. And so that's if what I'm the going to explain. I'm going to, explain. I'm going to clarify you, your, I'm going to clar clarify your. It's not done. Right. I'm going to no, clarify no, his ahead. analogy and then you can build off of it. This will help. I promise. Yeah. So it will. if you're a defendant, it would depend on whether it's a civil or criminal case, right? Right. I, not really. I mean, it's still truth is truth, right? Well, yeah, the because a defendant isn't going to lose their freedom. So in, in a civil case, so in a criminal case, you would lose your freedom if you're convicted of a crime, right? Okay. Presuming that yeah. that's the punishment affixed to it, right? So as a defendant, you wouldn't have the burden to prove what's true. The plaintiff would. So the affirmative okay. burden is placed on the person making the claims. So if you're making a claim, then you're going to have to support that claim with the burden and, and bear the burden of proof. And the burden of proof, if you believe the Bible alone is a closed canon of scripture, then you're going to have to prove that. And then that will be the truth that you can prove because the, the burden, the onus in a, in a criminal case is on the prosecutor. It's not on the defendant. A defendant actually, if, we, if the evidence is insufficient and weak, doesn't have to say anything and doesn't have to prove anything. That's why they often take the stand, don't take the stand and don't speak. So the point being is, is if you're going to claim that the Bible alone is scripture, because that in and of itself would invalidate LDS beliefs, because we reject that premise, you're going to have to prove that premise. Or you could flip it and then the burden could be on you. And we to, could to say, do, what, why do, do we, you not believe? Why I, do you not believe that, that would be that, it's, that would what? be that would be a negative burden of proof. That would be proving a negative. I don't have to disprove your claim. You have to prove your claim. So in the default, the default is this. The default is, is that the Bible is 66 ancient texts, 39 in Hebrew and 27 in Greek. That's the default. And those texts are wide and varied and they were compiled and they were assumed to be a closed canon sometime in the fourth century. That's the objective reality of the biblical texts. Now, if you want to presuppose that there's any kind of theology that can be derived from those texts, then that's a matter of debate. And so the point being is, is that if you believe that that's a closed canon, so did the first century Jews. So why did the, why did the Greek speaking Christians 
add to the Bible? So that's because it's was introduced through Paul and ministry through Jesus. Right. And what authority? Jesus, did, came, Jesus came to set up the church. Jesus didn't write any texts. So if you want to base it off of Jesus' example, he didn't write any texts. None of the it texts. It wasn't just an example, Jesus. though. It was teachings. Right. His teachings, which were basically interpretations of the existing scripture. So if you want to say that you shouldn't add to scripture, you've got a problem with respect to what occurred in the first century where you've got Greek speaking Christians writing texts and adding them and appending them to existing scripture. You take second Timothy, for example, where it says all scripture is given. What scripture is the author of that text referring to? It Jesus says all Bible. scripture is the, is the is God. Breathed. Yes. God breathed. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the word is in Greek. It just says, Oh, all there we go. Is inspired. So <laughs> yeah, it's God. Breathed. I mean, I don't know. Everybody wants to say Theonostas as though that, makes any difference to it the point being well, that you've been using greek so, and hebrew so i just wanted to make sure we're on the same page we are because we both have accepted and we acknowledged earlier that the texts were written in greek so whether it says inspired or theonostos it god breathed okay so the texts are god breathed all scripture is god breathed but what is all scripture that he's referring to the hebrew bible so if you want to use the greek That's text you could actually use yeah. the greek text to exclude the greek text from the bible and just say nope. That's just, that's just not the what Hebrew he's referring Bible. to, though. What? That's not what he's referring to, though. Okay, what other text is he referring to? All of these letters, and this is a first century. All the letters stuff he hadn't are, written yet. By the time that that was written, that is a letter written from Paul okay. to Timothy. Right? So okay. Paul, when these, when the church was built in acts right when we have these these churches going out right we, we find out that we have whatever corinth ephesus galatia we have all of these churches being built these elders that were ordained through the church by the apostles as they went through were carrying letters when they would show up from ephesus to corinth they would say what letters do you have what do you bring with you right mm -hmm. and that's what these preachings and sermons were coming from were from these letters that were traveling right you can read in first corinthians where he's talking about a previous letter that doesn't even make canon, right? Their first Corinthians is second Corinthians and second Corinthians is third Corinthians because he refers to a, a previous letter. He's writing back in regards to what he's heard. So these letters, while they were not canonized, these are what we have as scripture. And I would say that God is powerful enough and omniscient enough to understand our purpose to have these letters. So when somebody says all scripture is God breathed, right? And when it says uh, holy men of God were carried along by the spirit, the Greek there is not referring to somebody saying a man took a pen and started writing it. It's referring to carried along as in you're in a sailboat and the wind is blowing. You are not moving the sailboat. Now there is still human elements put into this, right? I would absolutely agree that what we read today is not the exact thing that was written in those letters previously. I would, I would stand here and argue that I am not reading the exact words written in those letters, but I would say that God has provided his word to us and it is true. The teachings and the intent of what is in scripture is true. While I may have a different word in front of me, it does not change the context of what is being taught to me. I'm not naive think, enough to say that every word I read in the English Bible is the exact word that was written on a scroll. I would say that we have good evidence to say it was, though, because the Dead Sea Scrolls have a almost 99.9% .9 text of Isaiah that is almost word for word from the original transcripts. It's a thousand years older than the transcripts they had when the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Um, I would say that there's good evidence to say that we can take what is written in scripture as truth. Right, but that's not the question. And that's not the question I asked. I appreciate that, that lengthy answer to a question I didn't ask. But the question I asked is, is what scripture is being referred to by Paul and Timothy? He's what, what is given to us from the Holy Spirit. That is exactly what he's saying. Right. Thus, the, he's saying God breathed. 
Right. So any like what any, we have today pretty much is what it was already meant to be, even though it wasn't all written yet. You know, now Priscilla, that, now you're you're just making an argument from an argument. But the, the point being is is that you're saying I, I, I don't understand what Paul is saying what text or scripture. All scripture is he it, I agree with with that brief analysis that whatever's being inspired by the guys who are writing, sure. That's what I believe too. That's why I don't believe in a closed canon. If God inspires people and they write scripture, that that text is scripture. It's God breathed. That's why yeah, I don't believe in a closed canon. Getting... So, so where what we're at is is why Genesis to Revelation in that order in those in that Bible. Why just that? Well, it comes down to, do you believe God can preserve his word like he said he could, or do you believe a 19th century man who came along and said otherwise? God preserves his new... word by calling prophets. That's the pattern in the Bible. But do you know the prophets are no longer needed? Do you know why where, they're no does, longer needed? Do you know why that? they were needed? And why, why, they're did, no... why does it say that, where does it say that prophets are no longer needed? All throughout the Bible. Where? All throughout the Bible, you, you, it doesn't say that throughout the Bible. I've never read any passage. Well, anywhere Jesus that says prophets taught it. No he said, "I have came to. I will build okay, so, the temple. I will destroy the temple and build it up in three days." Right. So I all just, the prophets that came after Jesus were just unnecessary. Is that what you're suggesting? Before him, no. No, after they him. All, what what, after what him. prophets were there after Jesus? The ones that wrote the Greek New Testament. They're not prophets. Well, they're not. So were they then? The prophet, prophet Hebrew is one that was sent. And that's an apostle. apostle. Apostles. It's also, it's also the Hebrew word for prophet. So it's also the word for right. Apostolos is in Greek. Apostolos means one who is sent. And prophet in Hebrew is the same thing. So it's one who's sent by God. So it's somebody who's anointed. Were the apostles not anointed by Christ and sent out to the world? But Paris? prophets had a specific um Prophets have what specific purpose? A, a specific, a specific purpose. The, purpose. The majority of um, the prophets in the Old Testament coming in, coming into everything was just to try to get the Jews to wake right. up. And once they got things started, everything worked out just fine. No, it was just coming. Morning. Jesus established his church, and he came down in the form of flesh. And no, Jesus didn't establish his church. The apostles established the church after he had ascended. So how does that After work? He After he ascended, the apostles established the church. That's what they just said about the Acts. In Acts, we have mm -hmm. them establishing churches, right? Prophets, yeah, prophets and apostles. And with You're telling Jesus me that I'm worshiping the wrong Jesus. You guys don't seem to have the chronology of the Bible down very packed. I'm just not, I mean, you're making claims and just saying all through the Bible says there's no prophets. The entire Bible was written by prophets. No, John, I know that. John I never said no prophets. Was John on the Isle I of never Patmos? said there was no prophets. I know there's there no were need prophets for them. all throughout time. Wait, Priscilla, I asked Before you, Jesus, but after Jesus, they were no longer needed. I, right. And so all of the apostles who wrote the, the Greek text were not needed. Is that your argument? No, I wouldn't make that argument either, because then you have to throw out the New Testament, because you're aware that the, the New Testament didn't start its authorship till at least four or five years after Christ with some of the first epistles of Paul. But the Gospels weren't written until a decade or more. The first Gospel of Mark, which we largely presume that it's Mark, was written about 20 to 30 years after Jesus. Mm -hmm. So who wrote that? Some dude, some random guy? Because Mark isn't even one of the a apostles. Man who was inspired by the Mark Holy isn't even one of the apostles, and he's allegedly the author of Mark. And he was inspired. So just inspired random people can write scripture. Is that your argument? No, you think, of course have to. Surely ordained by God, right? I, I, would have, I guess. I mean, I, I'm not sure what so you guys are saying. I believe that the that the scriptures were written by ordained, called servant prophets. And that as they received God's word, they were inspired and they wrote it. And that's what the scriptures are. My question well, to would, you is, is, why did that stop? And who closed the canon? Because Jesus said, Jesus even considers. Jesus can't have said something that closed the canon. Okay. Because the right. texts of the New Testament aren't written until after his ascension. So that argument, this isn't going to work.
Well, the, the prophet thing is what we're getting hung up on. You're using the words prophet to. It doesn't to matter what. Apostolos and prophet. Prophets now. Listen, like you've had a lot of time President, to talk. Let me talk. President Nelson, prophet, President Nelson, our current prophet. prophet. Yes, President Nelson, absolutely. our current prophet, is an apostle. Okay. That's what he is. He's the president of the apostles. The senior apostle is the president of the church. Peter was the senior apostle, and therefore he was the leader of the church. So he, he and he and John and the brother of Jesus, James, were the three pillars. And so the argument is what? Where is where is the text? in the bible that close the bible that make it where it's done that's the argument we we don't have that i know you don't so why do you believe that because, because we don't need because we don't need anything more we don't need anything more and yet here we are sitting here having this discussion where we're disagreeing about things and yes. you guys are citing to who who gets to decide? Priscilla asked earlier, who, how do you figure out what's what? Right? Okay. You certainly don't ask God. What we do is we sit down with a bunch of ancient manuscripts written in languages we don't read, and we argue about their meaning, even though... You were like... Even you, though... I see what you're doing, and but but what it goes back to is... not what I'm so doing. I'm, I'm, praying, stating, I'm stating I, an actual I, fact. Okay. All right. This... Man, we're not this. We're not going to have a fruitful conversation. Obviously, there's there's just a round and round argument going on. It's so. not. It, I, no, I'm asking. You, no, it was productive. I, I've. I'm asking you. the The point was is that the difference, the dividing line, the main dividing line, is simply whether or not the Bible alone is scripture. I reject that. You just agree that there's no verse in the passage in the Bible that supports that. So. I'm I guess asking it's just you now, the element of faith. That? At the end of the day, it's just the element of faith. Right, and then your all the other composing, all the other, everything that's outside of the Bible, does it contradict the Bible? And that's how we know that the Bible, the Bible is, is internally contradictory. Everything. No, it's not. Well, it's, it's okay. Well, let's go through that then. Where's the contradiction? Show me. Okay. Let, let's uh, compare the, the, uh, genealogies in matthew and luke yep the one in matthew goes through the the jewish line of his father uh -huh. and the one in and the one in luke being a gentile he goes through the lineage of his mother and they surprisingly both go through the line of david okay so why would a genealogy that says that it is the genealogy of joseph be referring to Mary because Luke's is referring to Joseph no okay go ahead and read it the genealogy in Luke 3 starts off with Joseph and then it states who his father was and then we're supposed to conclude from that that it was Mary's genealogy and not Joseph's Maybe I said them backwards to you. They're not. They both state that they're Joseph's genealogy. That is a scholarly attempt to reconcile the contradictions. But the reality of it is the texts were written independently of one another, and so they're going to bear contradictions. The existence of the genealogy within the text was included for theological reasons hell the the genealogies oh. don't even match the genealogies in numbers and chronicles the the genealogies and numbers and chronicles what are you talking about there if you actually go and try to feed those chronic those genealogies back into the ones that are contained in the old testament they don't fit that either but they both state that they're joseph's genealogy and they're divergent they don't they don't match I'm going to give them a moment to find that, but um, there are just other contradictions as far as there's what Jesus taught. Um, I'm sorry, what? There's tons of them in the Bible. And there's none in the Book of Mormon? Oh, there's tons, and there's, there's tons of problems with the Book of Mormon. It states that in the introduction. Scripture, scripture, scripture is not inerrant. 
scripture is filled with flaws because it's written by humans. There it is, Sean, inerrant, the word inerrant. <laughs> what about it? What, what, what about the word inerrant? I think it just comes down to the obvious, you know, What's that you guys believe that you can become gods one day. There's right, three where, heavens. Where, is that, where is that precluded? Well, I'm sorry, what do you mean? Where is that, where is that belief precluded? Why, why can't we become like God? You can become, you can be like him, but not be like, be him. That's why Satan was cast out of heaven. No, Satan was cast out of heaven for rebellion. And that's what you were told. That's what the LDS church is taught. I would go back to, once again, Genesis and read all throughout the Bible where. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You think that we're going to replace God. We don't believe that. No, you're going to become your own God. No, we're going to become like God. Exaltation you become is your becoming. Own God. I don't become my own God. Jesus can your become, own planet. Jesus, no, we don't believe that. That's not our theology. It's That's speculation it. now because it it's, got retracted. It's not. It's never been doctrine. It's always been speculation. People That's speculate not about true. all kinds of things. It is. I've been a member of the church for 40 years. And I've studied it extensively. Oh, okay. More than me? Every single day since almost being baptized. Which was how long? About two years ago. Okay. And obviously Sean too, though. You can't just discredit us like that. Sean I'm, has been a member and he left. Yeah, he seems to know the Bible real well. I've been very impressed so far. Good, man. All right, man. I, this just turned yeah. into an attack on the on, on each other, and that's not what I want to do. Yeah, that's not cool, bro. That's, that's, not, that's not that's not at all what this was supposed to be. Well, she just said that you were an expert in LDS theology, being a member for that's, thirty. I years, never said he was see. an expert. I just well, said I mean, he has. But that's not what I've said. So I was born into the Mormon Church. I spent almost thirty years in it. Um, you know, my sister is about to get married in the Salt Lake City Temple. Um, my mom, dad, brothers, family of nine, drove a BMW, a big Mormon wagon. Um, I've said. I'm discounting his appreciation of LDS theology because he doesn't seem to even understand what the content of the Bible is. You guys okay. believe things that you specifically state aren't in the Bible. You believe things and you're like, well, it's not in the Bible, but I believe it anyway. And then you, you criticize us for not accepting it. We, we just had a great agreement you know let's let's bask in the glory of the win in the sense that we both agreed sola scriptura is not in the bible but you guys still want me to believe in it i'm just not sure why well like i said man this is it's, it's not going anywhere it's You're been just... very productive We've, we just had a great agreement we had a, we had a dialogue we came to a, we, we stated our positions and we came to a consensus you're just your feelings are hurt no i don't have not, i don't have feelings I'm, so I'm, I'm, my feelings aren't hurt. look i the things that i want to say are irrelevant right you have that's that's your words not mine i absolutely man look i'm a cop i deal with i'm absolutely getting frustrated with you which is what your job is to do that's that's your like no, so, my, 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 I don't have a job. I'm not being employed anymore. to do anything. I don't want to talk I'm, anymore. I'm being, I'm being, angry. I'm, I'm engaging Whatever, in a dialogue. I'm not angry. I'm sorry. You're angry. That's the, the, I'm not I'm, in control I'm, of your anger. The, you, you have, that's to, not and as a police say, officer, you should be able to control you go, your anger and not that's get not angry. What I'm trying to say here. What I'm trying to say is you're just, you're, I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm getting I'm getting frustrated with the way the conversation is going. And I'm we, not we just to... had an agreement. We we we, we set did. out standards. We, we had an agreement that sola scriptura is not taught in the Bible, but you want me to believe it anyway. We could move on to how I have a different Jesus, and we could discuss that. Did you did you discover whether or not the genealogies were the same? So here, like I was kind of saying, I'm outside looking in, right? I don't really know. A whole ton about the mormon faith uh or the lds church if that's uh, what you guys call it and I'm, I'm an outsider looking in if i want to discover what you guys know to be truth 
I'm, I want to know. That's like, that's, that's, I would want to know that. That's what I was trying to get across earlier. Have you read the Book of Mormon? I have not. Okay, then you should read the Book of Mormon and then contact these missionaries. I have read okay. the Book of Mormon. No, hold on. Okay. Now, my thing is, is I know that you guys come out, uh, the two elders, I know that you guys come out and you, you go and do that. And that's one thing that, uh, one, I can commend you for. Uh, I've been involved with ministry through uh, the way I know it for a long time. It's hard for people in regular church to go out and share something that uh, to go in, you know, for the purpose of bringing someone into a fold. And that's, that's, uh, that's something that is, you know, near and dear to me would, would most of the term would be angelical going and uh, preaching what I know to be the gospel of Jesus. Uh, and I want to be able to one, be respectful of that. Um, I, I was a pretty ugly dude way before all this stuff. So like I would have got frustrated a long time ago. My patience has grown. Uh, quite a bit. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm curious. I know a lot of, I've sat and talked with other people of different faiths. And uh, it's, this one is one that I don't know, I don't, I never understand why it gets so heated so quickly. And that's not, the, that wasn't the game. Uh, the I'm, game I, I, and, I, I, and I apologize. I don't know what the heat it is. I'm not the yeah, least bit is, bothered or upset. I'm not sure the, why you guys it's are. It's the way you come across, Travis. You're a pretty brash guy, but that's, I understand that. You know, I, what, what, do, what have I said that's brash? Just kind of, you, you kind of keep throwing and poking at, you know, hey, this, and then you start kind of talking about, you know, well, police officers shouldn't, I mean, everybody gets frustrated in the line of work. I don't care about what you do. Okay. Um, that's, you know, that was, that was kind of, I didn't like where that was going. That's why, I, you know, I kind of moved the camera away. And, well, he said that he, he made, he made, he, he cast an aspersion at my profession. And, I did. And so, it was wrong. Right. It was wrong. So, right. So, done. so but the, and said that I'm that, I'm basically uh, trained to to what irritate people. Is that the the position? And so so now I'm supposed to be the bad guy in the conversation because I just not, all I said was is that if he's a peace officer, he should and here's here's have the here's, here's to my control his temper. We're, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep all that stuff aside for right now, and just so everybody kind of cools down. Okay. I, I'm just. I, I still I, would like to. I'm, I'm very. I would curious like. To, I would like to not talk about feelings and actually talk about substantive things. So we were talking about sola scriptura. We had an agreement on that. I would like you guys to identify what exactly are the characteristics of Jesus, and and why I have a different one. Uh, my mine is just. Uh, I, I believe Jesus to be. Jesus, the Son, the Father and Holy Spirit existing in one person. Okay, and where does Jesus identify that? Where is where is that taught anywhere? Where is the co-substantiality of the Trinity taught anywhere in the biblical text? Okay. I would go back to John 1, 1. Yes. That's um, where I'm right now. I would also go to 2 John, uh, or 3 John, sorry. Okay, but John, again, John 1, 1. John one one doesn't 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 talk about the consubstantiality of the triune God. Uh, it yes, it does. It's, in it's, Hebrew, uh, in it, Hebrews as well. It doesn't uh, just because I don't want to get it out. Of, I don't want to get it out of text. It talks about this is again in the beginning was the Word, okay. and the Word was with God, uh -huh. and the Word was God. Uh huh. Uh, so that's that's three. Right. No, it's two. So in the beginning was the Word, which is Jesus, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. The two of them are both God. How does that teach the Trinity? Well, it, it's, you have, it's, it's in context of everything that we go through. So that's a portion of where I would pull from. But where's the context that makes that triune or explains co-substantiality between the right, two? So then I would go, then I would go to Luke, uh, or not Luke, John 14, where he says, he's telling the apostles that he's going to... Um, Go to his father, who has a mansion. He's going to prepare many rooms. I will ask my father to send you the comforter. I will leave you alone. So now we're starting to tie these three together, right? I, that there's I, wait, three wait, so John God, fourteen, right? So John fourteen just three. identifies the three. Good. Okay. Absolutely, it does. And that's where 
that's where a portion of the belief comes from that we believe in God, um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Where are we at here? And then I got to find the text again. I was going to say the, the Luke um, genealogy starts with Joseph, but it is the line of Mary, if you do any research into that. It does say Joseph as the line because they start with the father, but the family genealogy is the line of Mary. Right, but but where would I find answer, the Mary genealogy the written anywhere else in any other manuscript that I could compare where it says, no, no, even though we started off with it being Joseph's genealogy, what we really meant is that it's Mary's. I, I can't tell you why he did yeah, that. Yeah, right. So that's my point. You have to go to an extra a, a, an extra biblical source, something outside of the biblical text, to try to to try to support that. I'm aware of the arguments, the, but the reality of it is, is the text actually states that that's Joseph's genealogy. That's just what it says. And you can you can come up with an apologetic argument to reconcile it with Matthew all you want, but the reality of it is, the text says what it says. And that's the distinction. I'm not reading the text trying to impose some meaning on them. I'm just reading them for what they are. And in Latter-day Saint theology, if there's mistakes or contradictions or problems in the texts, it's not a problem for us. We don't believe in inerrancy either. This is just a random question, but if the prophets, for whatever reason, decided to bring back polygamy, they said it's revelation. Would you guys start practicing it? If I was asked to, and it was a revelation from God, yeah. I don't anticipate that happening best based on the development of the church since that time, but currently it's illegal. But they're changing that, so who knows what will happen. Oh, they're yeah. making lots of other changes. <laughs> Yeah. Lots of weird changes. Yeah, there's been lots of weird changes in the church. For example, the Protestant Reformation. That was a, a trying time for the church. About 500 years ago, there was a really weird change. And then there was even more with the Anabaptists. And more and of course, with all of the all of the weird changes that took there's place. There's been more the changes church. though in the LDS Church in the last 200 years than there ever has been though in the, since it, the first in the 1800 years. No, no, there were not more changes in the LDS Church in 200 years than there have been in Christianity over its two millennia. No, that's. <laughs> Yeah, if I had I would, a, if I had a month, I couldn't probably answer that question completely. I would say that creating Jesus as God again in Scripture, which I, I don't know why I'm even doing this because well, we believe here. Jesus is God, so there's not a problem there either. And also, Jesus is God, and He's one of the members of the Godhead. So there's three gods, right? There's three beings, and they're all God. But where is there? Where is the Trinity? Three beings and one there's God. One God that there's has, one there's God. Three persons of one God. There wouldn't be three persons. Right. There. So right. So yeah. And the core doctrine there would be co-substantiality, or in the Greek, homo oousis or oousia. Oousia would be the concept you'd have to find in the text. So you have to find something in the text that contemplates oousia between the three, and there isn't, because the words one are not are not oh you well, what about basic text that says so for example i i have some pulled up text that says i am he before me there was no god form neither shall there be after me isaiah 43 10 that's king what, james what is, version and what does that and have then, to do with what does that have to do with the greek new testament because there you're saying there's three gods and that one day you can become a god and that there there are previous gods, right? But you, so you, I'm just right, pointing if, out. If you read, if you read Colossians chapter one verse sixteen, Second Corinthians four chapter four, you'll find out that Lucifer is a god that was created by God, and so that would make, under your interpretation of Isaiah forty three ten, it would make it a lie. So either your okay, interpretation so that was of that text, I would like to fact that. Colossians one sixteen, Second yeah. Corinthians four four. But if you'll read those, it's it's Jesus created everything, which you just stated earlier includes Satan. Colossians 1.14. 1.16. 1, 
Paul identifies Paul identifies Lucifer or Satan as the god of this world in 2 Corinthians 4:4. 4, 4. And yet you're saying 43:10 says that there was no other gods formed or created. Wait, you said Colossians 1:16. Right. That Satan was a god? No, that's 2 Corinthians 4:4. 4, 4. For Colossians so 1, 16, Colossians 1, 16 indicates that Jesus created everything. And your understanding is, is he created him from nothing, right? He created Satan out of nothing. Then Paul, Paul identifies Satan as the God of this world in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Satan is identified as a theos. Yeah, they also refer to the judges in the Old Testament, though, as gods, like lowercase g. That was a yeah, it is a lowercase. Well, there's no those are false. There's no capitalization in Hebrew. I get it, but that's how we that's how they distinct that it's not referring to God, but that's that's not what it's saying. You're 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 using you're you're using Psalm, yeah, you're 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 using Psalm 82 for for a purpose that doesn't fit with what I'm saying. So, in the Greek, in 2 Corinthians 4 4, Paul calls Satan a theos, which is God in Greek. Yeah, it would have an equivalent. Them. It would have an equivalent meaning as Elohim in the Hebrew, right? Yep. And it's God says, "I don't, I didn't, I don't know of any other Elohim in forty three ten. I didn't mm -hmm. create any. I didn't form any. That's your understanding. He didn't create any other gods. Now the problem with that is, is first of all, we don't believe we're created. So that would be an irrelevant text to our understanding in theology because we're aware of that text and we wouldn't agree that with a theology that is specifically contradicted in the biblical texts. So Isaiah 43.10 isn't saying that. It's saying it's, it's Yahweh saying, I have not created any other Elohim. I don't know of any, right? 43.10. Mm -hmm. But Paul is talking about the Theos that's the God of this world who you believe was created out of nothing. So God did, in fact, create another God, Satan. I think he's just saying that just to say it's it. I mean, it's not, he's not acknowledging it that it's a real God, but he's calling it the God of this world. Priscilla, you know? if, if you're not going to go with what the text actually says and then just back away from it when there's a troublesome problem with it and say, well, he's just saying something that we can just gloss over, then then really the, the whole the whole experiment with I'm missing your argument what? For Isaiah 40, I'm missing your argument there for Isaiah 43. Read Isaiah 43.10. You are my witness, declares the Lord, and my servant, who I am chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God formed, and there will be no one after me. Right. And see, and that's Latter-day Saint theology. We don't believe that there's any other gods formed because we don't believe that we're formed into gods, and we don't believe that gods are formed. Specifically in Isaiah 43, those are the post-exilic passages, and Isaiah specifically is denunciating well, I have a few more as pagan well. idolatry. I'm the first, that's, I'm wait, the last. Wait, wait. Besides me, there is no that's, And that's 45. So pagan idolatry is 44. what's being, yeah, pagan idolatry is what's being denounced in the 40s of Isaiah. Yes. Okay. Right. So he's yeah. talking specifically about them making gods out of stuff. Yes. Right. And and there is no made gods. Gods just exist. Right. He's saying I I don't but make gods. Where is just, that? Where is just where are. is where is it that gods just exist? They just exist. They're they're eternal. They're uncreated. Where you believe God is created? No, no, no. But where is these? Where are these other gods? Well, it's, where, where do we learn about these? Well, you could look at Deuteronomy chapter 31 and Daniel chapter 11 and Genesis chapter 6. But we, we really, I'm not going to spend all night here going through scripture chases and exegeting scripture. So I'm just pointing on that one, one, one point. 43.10, your understanding of 43.10 is that God is saying, I didn't create any other gods. That's not what the text is saying, but let's say that it does. If you believe that that's what it's saying, and you believe that Colossians 1.16 is Jesus being declared as the creator of all things, including Lucifer, then 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 has Jesus creating a god named Lucifer or Satan. Yeah, but that's mean, not... That's, which would mean 43.10 43.10 either means what you think it does and creates a contradiction, or it means something different. 
which would reconcile the contradiction. And that's my point, is you've got to make sure that you're not creating contradictions that aren't there with your own theology. Yeah, now, there yeah. are contradictions the, the in the same, Bible. The so same, there's contradictions yeah. in the Bible. There just are. But yeah, and I think theology that, shouldn't be creating them. What was that last part? Your theology shouldn't be creating the contradictions. No, and I think that the argument to say that they're saying Satan is a god is incorrect. I'm not it's, saying that. Paul is saying that in 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 4. He's saying he's the he's god the of this world, god, which, is, which is how he takes Jesus up on the high mountain and shows him the kingdoms of the world and says, all this will I give you, because Satan is the god of this world, and he has control over the world. They're just acknowledging that. Jesus calls him the prince of the world in John. So and I think we as Christians as well can agree on that. We say that he is the God of this world because this world isn't anything right. that's but meant But you also to be. believe that Isaiah 43.10. Yeah, but it's just a title God, for case G that's not meant to be as Priscilla, a genuine Priscilla, God. Priscilla, there are false gods. I, you, can, you can take the word and just, it is what it is. But what you're doing is you're saying, well, it doesn't mean that because I can see the. No, I'm just saying it's a false god. He could have said he's Satan a god, isn't a, but false it's a false god. god. Satan isn't a false god. He exists, doesn't he? He's not a god. He's not. Well, what attributes does he have that are different from what a god would have? Because remember, it's an Elohim that he's saying he didn't mm -hmm. form in forty three ten. Well, not unlike himself. God, he's not, he can't be everywhere. No, 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 no. he's not God comparing, can. wait, he's not comparing himself. So it's, it's Yahweh saying, I didn't form an Elohim. He's not mm -hmm. saying he didn't form another, another Yahweh. He's saying, I didn't form another Elohim. And you're believing that that means he didn't create another Elohim. Well, Latter-day Saint theology rejects the idea that God created from nothing, any of us. We've eternally existed. And it's partly because of these kinds of passages that we believe that. Also, the fact that creatio ex nihilo is taught nowhere in the Bible. But that said, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, Paul is referring to Satan as a god. He's the god of this world. But you're just saying, oh, well, he didn't mean like a real god. Okay, well, he meant like a what god? Because Satan's a real god. person. <laughs> no, he's a real being. You can really worship him. He really does have power. But that's called literally a false god. That's what makes something a false. You can worship anything. I could worship a pencil and make it a false god. Right, but Satan is an actual being that exists. Yeah, and like I, yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can worship this marker, but it's not actually a divine creature. Yeah, the Satan current is the in fact an actual being. Mm -hmm. He the actually has power. He actually appeared to and spoke with Jesus, didn't he? Or do you believe that's allegorical? No, I believe that. Okay, so he's an actual person who actually has power and dominion. But I thought you guys control. believe he doesn't have a body. He has a spirit body. Okay. So you haven't read the Book of Mormon. I've read pieces of it. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Because if you'd read the Book of Mormon, you would understand our theology with respect to that. It's pretty clear. <laughs> I've read the Book of Mormon. Um. That, so that argument that Paul makes, though, and and again, this is it's not I a, guess it's not an argument; it's a statement. Yeah. So yeah, he's, well, yeah. The, the, he, he just the, he's he's identifying something we're all agreeing to. Satan is the god yes. of this world, right? Because but, but because your interpretation of, of forty three ten creates a problem. Yeah. That's yeah, but I, that's irrelevant. To, that's yes, no. Forty three ten is about idolatry. Absolutely. Forty four, forty five. Yeah. It's talking about created like things. It's created like if I worship this as a god. It's not yeah. referring to actual divine beings that exist. So because those actually exist. We the have, argument there is is whether or not God created them from nothing. Right. But so that, we have that passage god. specifically says he doesn't form them. We have one God, and that God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. And in and, and text, which we've already argued that we're not going to say we agree on. Well, because uh, you, you, need, we you, say, need, you need to support Oousia in the text, the co-substantiality so that's required. That we have Jesus who tells us no one has ever seen the Father, right? So? That he is the Father is spirit, right? He is well, spirit. Well, it's not so because he doesn't, he he doesn't say, hold on, hold on, hold on, no, let me finish. No, so, we have the Father is spirit and we worship the Father, right? Right, so in John no, 4. We have the Son, the, 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 
God man, right? We have the son who has right, come, right. Jesus. And then we have the Holy Spirit who is also God, right? And we, we learn right. in I, Acts. I'm aware of the basic when argument. When people abuse. Right. So, I, I so get the go, basic whatever. argument. You don't need to Each outline the basic argument. one of them has been a God, yet there is only one God, right? It, except, except, first of all, monotheism isn't contained in the biblical text either. So that's another concern you're going to have to, another hurdle you'll have to jump. But again, I, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole now either. Monotheism is some, so you would have to first prove monotheism, which good luck with that. Then you'd have to prove that God is the self-existent singular being in all of creation. You're going to have to deal with the fact that there are in fact other Elohims that are mentioned and identified in the text. There are other which is the, which that are term identified. Used for people that were living people on the on the on the earth. When they refer to these Elohims and judges, no, 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 because and that's there's another problem with that. So, uh, if you if you go to to Psalm eighty two six, which is where you're getting yeah. that from, that that it, all of you are gods, but you shall die like men. That's what you're talking about. Okay, now here's the problem with that. Now turn to John ten, because Jesus is either misunderstanding that text or he's reinterpreting it. So turn to John ten. Yeah, go ahead. I'm there. Okay. Yep. So and which verse? Right. That Psalms 82, though, is uh he is speaking to worldly people. No, no, no. Yeah, that's what that's the common uh, understanding that people present, right? So here you because have that... here you have in in verse, let's uh, let's say 29. My father who has given them to me is greater than all, right? Not referring to himself, he's referring to his father, who is greater than all. He's not saying he is the father, he's saying my father is greater than all. Yes. Right? And of course, he wouldn't because they're separate personages, even though they're one being. No, no. So, yeah. So, it's persons, not personages. Personages has a different. Persons. Yeah. So, Regardless. I and the father, I and the father are one, right? It's verse 30. Now, is he talking about co-substantiality? So in that verse, you would need to show oousia. Oousia is a word that could be connoted as one or substance, but he doesn't use that word. He uses the word heis, and heis just means one, singular. It's often used in, in connection with the contexts of unity. So if you read the Shema in Deuteronomy 4, the Shema uses echad. So it says, hear, O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord is one, right? One in that verse is ihad, which is a unity. The, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are unified. They're a unity. We would agree with that, but they're not oousia. They're not one substance. And that's evidenced by the fact that Jesus is walking around with a mortal body among men, talking to and praying to his Father. And specifically, he tells the Jews that my Father sent me. My Father did this. My Father do that. I do the things that my Father do. I and my Father are one. And they pick up stones to stone him, and Jesus answers and says, I have shown you many good works from my father, for which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered him, it is not for a good work that we are going to, to, to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man make yourself God. When did he make himself God? When he put himself on the pedestal as the father, or with the father. Yes, he says, I and my father are one, talking about God. He's saying, I am the son of God, which would mean he is a deity. And they yes. understood what he was saying. Yes, that's why they went stones, to Right? You're saying you're a God. Now, previously, remember, in John 8, he had indicated that he was actually the tetragrammaton. I am. Yes. He was, right. So he, he goes and he indicates that he is the eternal God. <laughs> right? And then he says, I have a father. And I and my father are unified. We're one. And they pick up stones because you're making yourself a God, but you're just a man. Then he says, this is how he gets out of it. He says, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. This is the passage in Psalm 82. He's referring to that passage. We agree on that? That's the law yeah. he's referring to. Yes, 82, Psalms 82. Right. If he called them gods into whom the word of God came and scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him, the father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I say I am the son of God. Specifically, I'm the son of God. Right? 
So the problem with your understanding is effectively what you've got Jesus doing is saying, I and my father are one. I am one with the father. He and I are equal. We're the same. They're saying, well, you're making yourself a God. And to solve that, he says this. Is it not written in your law? I said you guys are mortal judges. Yeah, but keep reading. That's exactly what he's saying. Keep reading. Right. You guys are mortal judges. Yes. Right. How does that preserve him from blasphemy? It doesn't. Keep reading. So, so what's the reality of it then? He says, if I do not do the works, my father do not believe me. But if right. I do them, then you do not believe me. Believe the works so that you may know, understand that the father is in me and I and the father. Okay. So he continues and doubles down and says, no, no, yeah, I, right, I, right. No. So, but you're, you just missed the point, but he's not telling them they're gods. He said, right. no, no, that's what I'm saying. That, that's what I'm saying. If your position is correct, of what point was there in raising that? And, and he said, Jesus, because look, look, it's like, it's like, I'm, because here, they wanted, I'm here declaring because I'm they divine. wanted to stone him. I'm a divine. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's the point. They're going to stone him for claiming he is on equal footing. He is divine. He's the son of God. And then he says to preserve him from being black, being stoned. He says, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are theos. You are gods. How does I, I, that preserve him from blasphemy? If gods in that context just means you're mortal judges. Because that's what they knew it to be. And how does it preserve it? How does how is that responsive to the problem? I, <laughs> I'm the son of God, I'm divine, and you guys are judges. So, he's, Jesus is not trying to preserve himself from being stoned, though. He's not he's telling he's them not he responding is responding to the charge of blasphemy. Yes, but he, what you're trying to say I'm is the son of God. Oh, talking them out of stoning him which is not what he's doing he doubles down again and affirms that he is saying me and the father are one because and then they, they try to grab him. because they don't stone through. him they don't stone him because of his logic comparative to isaiah or uh, psalm 82 no that's not that's not what happens because that's what's they, happening in the passage what you're, you're saying is, is he you're not reading down far. right you're he not doubles down far. and they just don't stone him Therefore, they were they seeking again their mind for no reason. Him. Therefore, they were seeking again to seize him, and he eluded their grasp. So right. he doubles down and says, "I am right. the Father, one. I right. am in the Father. The Father's in me." So yeah. it's not like he was trying to talk himself out of getting stoned. He was doubling down and saying, "No, no, no. You don't understand. Okay. I am God." Not following the and they argument. try to grab him again. Right. You're not following the argument. Why does he say that? That's the point. Why does because he say, is it not written in your law? I said, you're God. I guess it's just a more of because a person. The following part, sarcasm, you know, because the following part, not, Psalm there's no sarcasm because sarcasm doesn't carry over. The, 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 the following part of Psalm God used parables. Through, Jesus used a lot of parables. When, when we read in Psalms, right, the, the following part is God bringing destruction upon those, those it's, gods. It's not, Jesus is removing Psalm 82 from its context. He's quoting it in response to a claim of blasphemy. He says, I'm the son of God. And he says, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. Why would he say in your understanding, is it not written in your law? I said, you are mortal judges. How is that responsive? That for a, That's how because is they that would responsive? know the following. Because when he says that in Psalms 82, the Jews that are trying to stone him would know that what he is saying is God is judging the unjust judges and here you are not looking at the works that i have done i'm telling you i am god these are my works look what i have done and then they say he says is it not word for word um he says has it not been written to you your law i said you are gods so right. we go back to psalm 82 right and what is psalm 82 we don't the go back to psalm 82 about, we don't go back what? to psalm 82 because huh? the New Testament manuscripts are ripping the Hebrew texts out of their context. No, it's not. It's not what he's doing at all. What he is saying is, I am God. And in, uh -huh. when he first... Yeah, I am the son of God, right? Yeah, let me, let me go through my thought process without you interrupting me, and maybe it'll make sense. So if I go back, if he says that one line out of Psalm 82, they understand what he is saying, because they know the context of Psalm 82. And in the context, context of Psalm 82, what is happening there is God is saying to these 
unjust judges that he is bringing judgment upon them, that he will judge the earth, not them, right? So now when he tells these Pharisees that are trying to stone him, he's telling them, I am God. Is it not written? Um, I said, you are gods. So he now the Jews know, oh, he's talking about Psalm 82. And he's saying how God is going to judge the judge the world, right? He's going to be the judge of this, not us. And so they try to grab him again because he's doubling down saying, you're telling the fair, he's telling the Pharisees they're wrong is what he's telling them. He's not trying to talk himself out of getting stoned. He's trying to tell well, he's them. He's not talking themselves out of it. He's responding to the claim of blasphemy specifically. And, he's, and that's why and the analysis that you just that shared, going to bring judgment the analysis upon you, that you just shared saying, doesn't make sense in context because he's claiming he's the son of God. He says, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. And you're believing that his response to claiming he's the son of God was to say, you are mortal judges. Yes, you're ju you, that's all he's saying is that you guys don't understand and, that and I am How God. is that responsive to the claim of blasphemy? It's He's not responding to them calling him blasphemous. It's, okay, not just, it's just a throwaway verse. He just says, well, Psalm 82, 6. Oh, no, you, you, you have to read all the way through. You I have, have to read, read all, all the way through. I get what well, you're, you're saying. Stopping. I get what you're so, saying. It just I don't think you're understanding that what you're saying makes no sense. Have you read the Bible entirely? I just want to say I know you asked. Yes, me I read it as a child. Yeah. I would, I would, I would With a child recommend dies, reading it that's again. Why I became a Latter Day Saint. I've read it many times. Do I sound like I've not read the Bible before? Is there anything that I've I've said or done tonight that gives you the impression that I've not read the Bible? No. Okay. I just no. So yes. why did you ask me if I've read the Bible? Because I just I mean I asked you if like you read the Book of Mormon. Jesus you asked is me specifically about a doctrine that's contained. I just it. feel like if you've read the whole Bible, Old New Testament, in just the context of the Bible, outside of any other source, I, you I, would know that Jesus that you LDS can't read it outside of any not. other source. You can't read no. You can't read. I, no. Okay, I, let, I, let's take let's, let's, take, let's take Priscilla's let's take Priscilla's hypothetical back. Okay, I read the Bible without any other source. And it makes and, sense. And 100%. I don't read anywhere in the biblical text that it closes the canon. So what I see is a pattern of God interacting with his children and doing so through prophets who subsequently write scripture. And after I'm finished, I go, huh, I wonder why he stopped doing that. Would, and then after I decide that, and I go and I look at other churches who believe that the Bible alone is scripture, but just as we discussed here, can't provide any support for that position. I go and I seek after some other religion that says, hey, we don't believe in a closed canon. Here's additional scripture. You can read that. So I do. I read that scripture. And I come to conclude that that scripture is also scripture. And in fact, it helps me to better understand what's being said in the Bible. So and how do you let's continue? What, how do you make up for the fact of the people that have said the opposite to where they have came to the LDS church and then they're like, whoa, no. Well, I don't know what you just said. What you said didn't make any sense. I'm to me. saying you're saying that somebody who's read the Bible and they're seeking out more that they would be very interested. Um, they would see from a new lens, basically, like the LDS church. It would make more sense. But what do you say to the people that have sought out the LDS church and they actually are like, whoa, no, this is not at all biblical and also to the people that have left the church I, I would who've say, been in it for many years. I, I would say I would say that they're making the mistake by saying this is not at all biblical and they should I, correctly leave the church. I'm gonna go back to because our our beliefs don't all have to be in the Bible. Just like the New Testament gospel doesn't have to be contained in the Hebrew Bible. Because if it was, why would we need the Hebrew why would we need the Greek New Testament? What, what was the purpose of the Old Testament? Well, I, I don't know. I thought you read the Bible. I have. But I'm not, no, no, I'm no, not no, trying to make, I'm not trying to make an attack. I'm, I'm just saying, what would you, what, what, you have no assumptions on what the Old Testament would be? Which, which text? From. I don't believe it's a, I don't believe it's a cohesive singular unit. So asking me what the purpose of it would depend on which text, because it's okay. Is it, texts and would you one, agree that each text two, has its own purpose? Yeah, I, I understand that. Would you agree that there's a. No, 
if biblical a theme or a message or something that's continuous no. throughout no i wouldn't that, that there's no okay all right then that that's not going to make any sense then nope it's not and if you believe yeah. that there is no. one you're welcome to show me no i, I just from, from time and time again right we i would say that from genesis 3 um through isaiah through uh, all of these prophecies right even abraham and isaac right uh, on the sacrificing abraham and I, all of these things are prophetic leading towards christ right so then yeah, looking, my, at, looking at it from the argument, lens of a christian an argument on why the, yeah but see that would why, that would violate what priscilla said which would be reading the texts without an external source so if you're reading the the hebrew bible from the lens of christianity then yes you're going to see abraham sacrificing isaac as a type of jesus's sacrifice you're going to see right. the you're going to see for example yeah. well and that's also going to create some theological problems within the composition of, of texts like Matthew, for example, where it's right. got it's got events that are contained in the texts, which are historically dubious, but they're contained there for a theological reason to try to connect okay. Jesus of Nazareth back to Moses. And so if if you believe that, yeah, I mean, some of the authors are trying to tie the text together. Mostly that occurs in the New Testament. But ultimately, in the texts, because they're the Jewish nation and they're they're building on the law of Moses, I guess if you want to say there's a theme, the theme is to keep the Israelites faithful under the law of Moses. Okay. And 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 then in Hebrews, right? We'll jump to where because in Hebrews, that's specifically what we're gonna what it addresses, right? It's trying to whoever the author of Hebrews is is trying to speak to the Jews. Does to, it doesn't it matter who the author of Hebrew is? Yeah, I don't think we know, though. It doesn't explain to us who the author of Hebrews is. Then why is it in the Bible? Because God decided it would be in the Bible. When, <laughs> how be, did, how did be, he do that? It would be his special revelation. Why, why is Second Nephi in there? Well, Second Nephi is in there because the Book of Mormon isn't like the Bible. The Book of Mormon is a book. Yeah, uh, so is the Bible. No, the Bible is not a book. The Bible is an anthology, as indicated it by is the a title collection of Bible. Writing. Yes. Right? The Book of Mormon is a book it's not it's not a collection of writings okay it's an edited well, it's an edited book that's why it's called the book of mormon did you okay. learn that when you were a member that it's not like the bible it's a book uh, i learned it was very hardcore about another testament of jesus christ um and and look man i got i've, I've got lds family i'm not i don't have this like hate for the lds church it's not a hate that i i know um, but I'm, I'm just questioning how much you understood about lds theology when you're a member because if you believe that the Bible and the Book of Mormon are the same kind of thing, they're not. The, the Book of Mormon is not like the Bible. It's not an anthology of texts. The Book yep. of Mormon is a compiled document and, and put together purposefully by three authors. The okay, so Bible, I'll go back to the Bible. So, for example, you said awesome, man. Hebrews. I get it. I wait, wait, no, we're going back to Hebrews. So you accept Hebrews as part of the Bible. You don't know who the author is. And you're saying because it's part of God's special revelation. So what is your what is your support for why Hebrews is in the Bible? What's the argument? Because because it was ordained by God to be in the Bible. But That's part of know? walking by faith. At some point, right, you're just going to be walking see, by yeah, sight your whole life. Because of feelings. Yeah, the Holy Spirit, right? The burning in your bosom is no, what's going our, to hurt feelings. No, it's not by feelings. It's well, in the Bible. What else is it? What else is it? What else is it? What else is it? What, what's the um, objective reason so why we're Hebrews, gonna go, we're gonna, we're gonna go back to what I'm here, though. Hebrews, and, a text of unknown. So if we're gonna authorship. say that there's no underlying narrative, right? That I can only read the old testament, and I do. When I read the old testament, I read um whatever I'm just running dry on a, a specific so, example. But so I Hebrews, read the text to who the text was written to, right? That's what I don't read it in the in this image same thing when i read corinthians i don't read first and second corinthians as if this is some thing written to me i don't read myself into the text or read anything like that it's it is written to the church of corinth and what does this with, have to do with what, what does this have to do with why you believe hebrew should be in the bible it's it's all it's that's you brought that up and i'm going to finish what i'm going to say well you were we going to cite to hebrews and before we do that i'm just asking you why is it in the bible you got to know who the author is interdicting. you have to let me finish all right. So if we go with this underlying narrative that it's just the Old Testament was just for the Israelites, right? There was no other purpose for it. I didn't it say that. Keep, it, it was to keep the Israelites 
these are general statements, man. I, I don't, I'm not quoting you word for word. If I could roll back the hands of time and just write everything you said down, I would do it, but I'm, I'm not trying to misquote you. Okay. So if I'm saying that the old Testament is specifically a text written to the Israelites to keep the Israelites moving forward with the law of Moses, right? right. If, if is, whatever, is it not that? No, no, no. Let me go, man. You're like jumping five steps ahead because you're trying to stop me and get your objection in before I can finish it, right? There's no judge here. It's just us. So I've got my texts that are written to the Israelites to follow, that are supposed to keep them in guidance and in line. And it's all these warnings from God to these prophets saying, hey, turn back to me. Turn to me. I'm waiting diligently for you, right? So all these things. And this, this doesn't happen. No one has ever fulfilled the law of Moses, right? Not Except that for the people who are living it. Who have not fulfilled it. They've broken why, the why law. Haven't they have, why haven't they fulfilled it? Because it was fulfilled in, in the person of Christ, right? So I, I'm sorry. Have, the, the law of Moses, are you saying okay, that they couldn't I'm, keep it? I'm just dude, not I can't even have a conversation with you because you're, you won't want to It's because, talk. well, you keep, so look, you, you can't no, just make a I'm, big, long dialogue, monologue statement of a bunch of things that you're imposing as presuppositions okay because what you All have right, to dude. do is you have to We're, stop this, at each point this is a this is a very the conversation point. because you, you can't have to support stop the let point. finish no i can't okay I, i've been sitting no, you here can't. For a, you have a, you have a, you, you have this you have this superiority that you want to continue to talk over everyone else which yeah. makes this an impossible stop there you go right there there you go i'm not right you're no. proving my point again nobody else can speak because you have to speak over them so if I can't even say a point, it's irrelevant to try to have a conversation. Can you make all you want to do is argue succinctly? the point, I'll, but buddy? All you want to do is argue the point and try to get your words in, so I can't say my words. Do you understand? Okay, come to the point sense? then. Okay, your point. My point is I'm done because this conversation is fruitless. What What was the What was the point? I'm of done. This conversation? No, that's if y'all want to continue to have a conversation. What was your, What was the point of the conversation? I would start it again, but you would just cut me off and you've proved my point over and over again. So this conversation is fruitless. All right. What, hey, what point man, have I proven? Because the problem with it is, you is that you're, that I'm done. you're going right. through, you're going through and you're monologuing about something that I We're going to head out. Um, one of my people just left. So. But we went ahead and came up to the ultimate question of what is the dividing barrier between the two faiths um so that way we can just go from there and then and as far as you guys go what do you think is the dividing barrier between the two beliefs but generally the, speaking um latter-day saints um reject some of the core doctrines of what we view as apostate christianity um and namely those are the nature of god um, you guys believe in the ontological trinity and uh, we reject that and then the as an ultimate source of authority typically evangelicals accept the um doctrine of sola scriptura which we also reject so how do you my question to you is how do you know when to stop the open right, canon because you guys, Absolutely. You know, yeah. for whatever reason believe only the bible is scripture because that's what we find in scripture and so the argument is what where is where is the texts in the bible that close the bible that make it where it's done that's the argument we we don't have that i know you don't so why do you believe that Yeah, the Holy Spirit, right? The burning in your bosom is no, what's going our, to hurt my feelings. Okay. All right, or, this man, we're not this. We're not going to have a fruitful conversation. Obviously, there's there's just a round and round argument going on. It's so. not. It, I, no, I'm <laughs> asking. You, no, it was productive. I, I've. I'm asking you. The the point was is that the difference, the dividing line, the main dividing line, is simply whether or not the Bible alone is scripture. I reject that. You just agreed that there's no verse in the passage in the Bible that supports that. So I'm I guess asking it's just you now, the element of faith. That? At the end of the day, it's just the element of faith. And right, then your feelings. All the other yeah, the Holy Spirit, right? The burning in your bosom is no, what's going our, to hurt feelings. You guys okay. believe things that you specifically state aren't in the Bible? 
you believe things and you're like, well, it's not in the Bible, but I believe it anyway. And then you, you criticize us for not accepting it. We, we just had a great agreement. You know, let's, let's bask in the glory of the win in the sense that we both agreed sola scriptura is not in the Bible. But you guys still want me to believe in it. I'm just not sure why. Hello and welcome to Freed Indeed Live. I'm your host, Kevin J. N. Hughes, and today I have a special guest with me, Priscilla Destiny. She is a convert to Eastern Orthodoxy.